What's going on YouTube? I've been wanting to do more videos, so I'm going to go ahead and just start this camera and record something. So, what I want to talk to y'all about today is uh, these printers here. Now, I have had a lot of trouble with any printers larger than uh, 400 millimeters. I've got a couple 400 millimeter printers, but when you start getting into these CR10 Maxes, they've been giving me just all kinds of trouble. And it's not to say it's a bad printer, it just seems like when you get a large printer, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have more issues. Now, first thing we're gonna notice here is already I've got a little bit of peeling on this side. I think for this print, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Generally, I would restart a print uh, due to that because that's just gonna ruin the whole thing. But for this client, I'm not sure if it's gonna ruin his print. And there's still issues with this, so I just wanted to kind of point them out and uh, show you where I'm at with it. So. We're printing some of our filament, Dragon Print filament right there, 190 to, to uh, 210, but it actually, it likes running a bit hotter. Now that too, this nozzle is actually at 1, so it's, it's not a point one; it's a straight up 1. So because this is such a big print, I wanted to go ahead and, and put a real fat nozzle on it so that hopefully it printed a little faster. Um, but if we look here, I want to show you there's gaps in between my lines. This isn't ideal. You know, when the layer started, I thought my first layer was real nice and all the lines were nice and connected here but it seems that as it's gone up I didn't have enough flow by any means so I've now increased the flow so I went over here and I actually the first thing I did was turn up the temperature 10 degrees to make sure that it wasn't uh, under or, or not extruding it because it was cold or something but uh, I've got the, the flow turned up 35% and yeah I'm hoping the goal is is to turn the flow up enough to a point that these lines touch um, and that should get us back to where we need to be but in a, I mean it's looking like I'm gonna have to up, up the flow to about 50 percent so I guess Kira is not calculating this properly um, we'll see if this prints usable in the end this is like a two or three day print and it's only about 20% done, so I'm just going to see this one through at least a little bit more until I get this flow situated, and then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to uh, uh, start it again because we actually have to do two of these blocks, another piece that fits into it, and then another bigger piece than this. So it's going to be quite a while. I'll show you on this one over here. This totally stinks. So this one was doing it, and then look, you can see here we had a layer skip. I caught it. I caught it right at that layer shift, and that totally sucks because it was probably a little bit higher than that one. It was probably about 25%. What ended up happening though, so as you can see, I'm trying to push this front to back. I'm trying to push it this way, but it's only going diagonal. Because this is a core XY, I can't, <laughs> I'm literally forcing it, I can't. What ended up happening is that NEMA motor over there uh, took a dump. So if you actually go to twist that, it is very hard, it's locked up. So I went ahead and ordered a new pair because it's just going to be easier to replace both and know that they're right. Because if you get, it, you know, I was looking at these and there's so many different NEMA motors out there. If you get the wrong amp, step, degrees, um, you know, getting your Core XY to work properly again can be really, really difficult. So I went ahead and did my best to find the exact ones, and I didn't even want to buy one again. I just bought a pair, so I'm going to replace both of those. That way, uh, when I put it back together, at least the X and Y is matching. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of point that out today. Um, this is actually, this printer is not mine. This is a friend of mine named Sal's, and uh, he brought it over here for me to do some upgrades. So we're going to take the, the Bowden tube off, we're going to put a direct drive on it, we're going to go with the Z stabilization bar, and uh, there was one other thing I thought. Now we're going to see how, so I, I just did a big tree um, V2 controller board on a CR10 5S, and it did not work right. So I could not get it to flash the firmware properly, I could not get an SD card to read on the motherboard. It was never showing connected to a printer, so it was really, really weird. And I went ahead and just ordered another one because I'm thinking that the SD card slot was just um, bad on it or faulty. 
So if, if this other one works, and it works on that one, we'll probably do that motherboard upgrade to this one, because that one lets you bring in the 2209s with UART. And uh, that's a pretty interesting feature, and, and I'll go into that more in another video, because I, I don't even fully understand it, but from my under I, I, I believe from my understanding is you don't even need uh, end stops, that you can literally just run your stepper motor to the end and let it let it you know jam out and then that it reads that jam and says okay stop that's home uh, and this is kind of how the um, Prusas do it if you if you've ever seen a Prusa MK3S it homes both Z's all the way to the top till they jam and it'll bah, 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 jam and then it goes down and it homes to the bottom bah, 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 and then it's and it's done and it, and it homes to your X and Y the same way so I thought that was kind of neat when I had seen that on a Prusa. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update, um, you know, kind of getting my, my workspace a little cleaned up here. But, uh, yeah, not too bad, guys. Yeah, my recommendations totally, if you're going to get a CR-10 Max, I'd maybe, but I've had a lot, of, a lot of problems with this printer in particular, a lot of problems with that CR-10S. I had another customer that brought me one that he ended up returning. So, uh, you know, maybe get a 10 log D5 or a 10 log D6. That's a 500 millimeter or a 600 millimeter. And uh, you'll get a dual independent head. For a little bit extra money, it's like buying two printers. Um, so I definitely, definitely recommend one of those. It'll at least be on linear rails. Um, have a nice color touchscreen too. But, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. And we'll talk to you soon.